Foundation to support these four really critical organizations that have come together to raise money for our friends who are living with AIDS in our community. It gives them hope and it gives them the support that they so richly deserve and need. So I could not be more honored to be here and to be part of it today. Thank you. Here's the next step in this process. One of the things that's most important about combating this illness and and social issues in general, is that you really need to focus on finding a person that has vision, courage, um, and, and, and really is can embody what leadership means. And especially when this disease first presented itself in our world, we needed a lot of courage. We needed folks who were willing to really stand up and take a really um, very difficult path because there was a lot to confront. There was stigma, there was anger, there was fear, there was ignorance. And one of those folks came up and she started doing this work very early on. And interestingly enough, she's never stopped. She's been doing it ever since. And she started her agency in 1988. The agency is Rise and Shine. I know many of you have heard of Rise and Shine. Many of you are strong supporters of Rise and Shine. And one of the things that she says, she says, you can have a dream and you can make it work, but you better roll up your sleeves. Rock on, that's what I say. And that statement right there embodies the recipient of our Aid Service Award this year, and that is Janet Trinkus. So when we talk about leadership and courage, you know, one of the things that she did was she took her home, she had a farm in Snohomish County, and she sold it so she could start Rise and Shine. This is 1988. She, she left her job, left the corporate world, decided she was gonna do something and make a difference. She needed to work with kids. That's what she said. She, today there are 160 active children working with Rise and Shine. So today, the point being still, it's still an issue, right? It's a little bit more quiet than it used to be. It's not as dramatic in it as it used to be for the rest of the world. But for those young people, it's still an issue. And the interesting part about her work is that she's been able to see these young people go through her program, come out, come back again, and now they volunteer for their program. Okay? So that's talking about what is success. In 2002, Janet was chosen by the Giraffe Project, and as she was a giraffe, or is a giraffe, I don't know, is it still is a giraffe? She says a giraffe. And this award is given in the United States and 27 countries around the world for those unselfish individuals who stick their neck out and get the job done. Hmm? Again, this embodies Janet Trinkus. Janet was also recognized by the Children's Alliance of Washington State as an outstanding advocate for children, in 1995, she was a recipient of the Safeco's first Rudy Award in recognition of being a beacon of light in our community. With this award, $30,000 came to Rise and Shine. So again, everything that she's done, everything that she is, is about that commitment that we are talking about, and she reflects the commitment that we're asking from you today. She is, she is a leader. Thank you, Janet. Back in the 80s, um, when I started Rise 
church and I, I was shocked because I was asked by some members of the AIDS community not to form Rise and Shine because there were men dying and if you formed a children's agency, what would happen to the men? All the money would go to the children and you can't let that happen. Please don't do what you're doing. Wrong thing to say to a Taurus. <laughs> right, Cody? Cody's my grandson and a Taurus also. Um, they were wrong because I went to corporations, businesses, individuals, and they slammed the door in my face. They didn't want to associate with the disease. There was so much fear, alienation, isolation, that they wouldn't help. So it became more than just helping children, it became a mission that I had to climb this huge mountain and, and overcome this prejudice. I saw adult children be abandoned by their parents. Those adult children had, grand had children. So we had little children without grandparents. I watched marriages crumble as male members of the partnership had to come out and acknowledge that they were gay. Their children were left in the wake. Again, adult parents abandoned those people. And I kept seeing the children. What about the children? And then I said, we've got to have a program. We've got to support them. We've got to have what I had. My parents had many brothers and sisters, so I had lots and lots of aunts and uncles and cousins. These children need lots of aunts and uncles and cousins. We started the mentor program. When I was a little girl, it was during World War II. Yes, I am that old. <laughs> I remember the blackout shades. I lived on the East Coast. When the air raid siren went on, you closed the shades at night. And I'd lie in the attic in my bed, shivering, afraid that the bombers would come and drop bombs. My dad would sneak out, and I'd hear him come back at four or five in the morning. Then the polio came, and we were quarantined in my home. All the kids were quarantined. I was afraid. I was very afraid. I was terrified. But every Sunday, I went to church. And we had Sunday school, and we talked about these horrible things that we were all afraid of. Rise and Shine has the Magic Circle Support Group, where kids come together and talk about death, and dying, and AIDS, and dysfunction, and addictions, where they share their fears, and isolation, and alienation, and their anger at a community that had abandoned them. I went to summer camp. Every child should have that opportunity. Rise and shine now has summer camp. It's a very, very important time because we bring all the children from the Puget Sound area, Bellingham in the north to Vancouver in the south. We bring them to camp, and some of them, it's only once a year that they get to stand and say, I'm here because my mom has HIV. I'm here because my dad died of AIDS. I'm here because I'm scared. I'm here because I can't tell anyone at school. At camp, they get to stand in a circle and say that. The staff that we have at camp is the staff of Rise and Shine. They are incredible. And this award needs to be given to them as well. But these are the children that are left behind. And these are the children that Rise and Shine works with. There is one difference, however, in their lives from my childhood. This list, this is not a speech. This is a list. We have a memorial service and a celebration of life every summer at camp. 
in an outdoor chapel where we've planted trees on the shores of Lake Wenatchee in memory of the parents and children of Rise and Shine who have died. And then we read the names. Mother of Gustavo, mother and brother of Larry and Trinisha, mother of Latoya and Giovanni, father of Emily and Tommy, father of Lyric, Shana, and Tempest, brother of Nathan, Matthew, Jeremy, and Christopher. And the list goes on and on. Mother of Hussein and Samara, brother of Makia, mother of Jasmine, father of Colt, and the list goes on and on. And every year we read this list and we honor these parents. Last year, I guess it's this year, at camp, we had lost two mothers and one father, leaving 11 children. And some people say, it doesn't matter about the kids. They'll get over it. Well, I'm here to tell you they don't. But I'm here also to tell you that there's a wonderful group of volunteers out there who give up vacation and time to be mentors, to do support groups, and to take a week at summer camp. And these are the people that this is for. The board, I have the most amazing board. I say EDs don't get along with their boards. Well, I'm here to say that is not true in this case. I have a fabulous board, fabulous volunteers, fabulous staff, and the kids have stepped forward, sometimes timidly, but they step forward and say, we are here for each other, and we will continue to be. Thank you very, very much.